Okay. You ready? ready sir? Yep. Okay, three, uh, two, one. Let's riff. Okay. See where it. Okay. See where it goes. Yeah, you know, I love my brother, uh, and I'm very proud of him and proud of what he's done. But usually, I don't sit around thinking about it. I suppose I should. <laughs> Uh, Peter's style. Peter is very knowledgeable. He goes way into the weeds. He can sometimes be a little difficult. I first learned about Peter DeFazio way back when, when he in fact endorsed me when I was running for Congress uh, in 1990 in Vermont. And I got to tell you, not a whole lot of members of the U.S. Congress endorsed me at that time. Like, Virtually nobody. Can I have the phone book of his accomplishments? A lot of the good things he did were preventing bad things from happening. Preventing the privatization of the FAA, the privatization of Social Security, which was huge, and also closer to home, the preventing selling the Coos Bay Rail Line to a hedge fund that might have dismantled it. You know, we're like throwing his body in front of the bus half the time. So, I don't know. He's an incredible man. Peter DeFazio grew up in the 1950s in Needham, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston. Peter and his older brother Michael learned the importance of public service from their mother, who was a librarian, and their father, who was a naval reservist, a high school teacher, and a wrestling coach. On Cape Cod, my father was a director of a caddy camp at a private golf club. And with his naval background, um, he ran the caddy camp like it was a naval installation. We learned the value of hard work. We learned the difference between those people that had all the expensive golf clubs and uh, those people that worked for them carrying them. Peter was a star wrestler in high school. He was also captain of the high school team. He went on to wrestle uh, at Tufts University where he was very successful. And what appealed to Peter was the individuality of the sport. When you are on the mat, you are alone. There's no one who can assist you. There's no one else to blame if you make a mistake. Well, after Peter graduated from Tufts, he happened to come across Holiday Magazine. And there was a big feature article on Oregon with beautiful scenery, uh, beautiful mountains, beautiful coast, the focus on outdoor activities, which he liked very much. He chose uh, the University of Oregon, and I guess in a sense, based on an article in Holiday Magazine. While in graduate school for a master's in gerontology, Peter joined the staff of Congressman Jim Weaver and managed senior casework. One day, he met with a constituent to help her with her federal benefits. Her younger co-worker, who also attended, sparked his interest. One of my senior staff had a Social Security disability problem, and I was sent to Peter DeFazio as the local expert in all things related to seniors. While I was sitting there with my older worker watching Peter DeFazio work magic with the federal bureaucracy, it was literally love at first sight. A few years later, Peter was outraged by rising utility bills tied to a risky deal hatched by a big regional utility company. The deal put local customers on the hook to pay for the construction of a nuclear power plant even if the project was never completed. So Peter filed a citizen lawsuit against mega utility Washington State Public Power Supply System, or whoops. The goal was to prevent a disastrous expansion of nuclear power funded by Oregon and Washington utility customers. Despite being heavily outmatched, he won the lawsuit. Later that year, the Oregonian editorial board labeled Peter an economic terrorist a label he wore with pride for his work protecting his community from this financial fiasco. Individual people have no hope of being able to confront and change those forces without an advocate. And Peter recognized that he could be such an advocate, and that's what he demonstrated himself to be with the Whoops lawsuit. Following the significant Whoops lawsuit win, Peter ran for and won a seat on the Lane County Commission in 1982, where he focused on cutting waste and bureaucracy and investing in jobs and the economy. In 1986, Jim Weaver announced his run for the U.S. Senate 
and Peter threw his hat in the ring for his congressional seat, where he ran on stabilizing utility rates, rebuilding roads, bridges, and ports, protecting timber jobs by stopping log exports, and reforming the tax code to help working families and small businesses. Peter has an incredibly diverse congressional district. It was the kind of congressional district where you could be in one town and they're calling you an eco-terrorist and you're in another town and they're bringing in stumps and they're throwing sawdust on you. And Peter DeFazio had a unique ability to tell people where he stood, what his values were. And that meant that people all across the political spectrum believed him when he told them where he stood and they supported him. Is this, is this on? Yeah. Say, hi, say hi to Bernie. Hi, Bernie. In his second term in Congress, Peter delivered on his campaign promise with a huge legislative victory, banning the export of unprocessed logs from federal lands and protecting Oregon jobs, a hallmark of Peter's career. If we stopped shipping all logs to Japan tomorrow, within 30 days, they'd be back over here buying that finished volume from us because there's no place else they can go for what they want. This is the largest timber producing district in the country. And it didn't make sense to be harvesting timber and shipping the whole logs off to Japan and losing all the jobs that, that could have been had by running the logs through mills here in Oregon. It put Peter up against some of the larger uh, timber uh, companies in the world. He just took the fight on. They have declared war on the Forest Service. Well, it's a war they won't win. In the 1990 Ag Bill, Farm Bill, um, Peter offered an amendment to create some national standards, organic standards. People could say organic on any product, grow it, anything, put any kind of pesticides on it. There were no guidelines. Peter's responsible for ensuring that there are, you know, strong guidelines and standards around anything that's got that USDA organic label on it. Peter DeFazio spent his career serving on the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, becoming chair from 2019 to 2022. He served 27 years on the House Natural Resources Committee, including two years as the ranking Democratic member, as well as a stint on the House Homeland Security Committee. But no matter what committee Peter served on, Peter was a fierce advocate for working families and someone who wasn't afraid to challenge the leadership of his own party or reach across the aisle to deliver solutions for Oregonians. When we were opposed, he was a worthy adversary. When we were on the same side of the issue, he was a great ally. We passed a piece of legislation on every mode of transportation uh, while we worked together. The Water Resources and Development Act, which for 20 years had passed every two years in Congress. Uh, Peter, I know, worked closely with my father on that and uh, so proud of him for doing it and so good for America to have those dollars going for their intended purposes and that's to rebuild our harbors in this country. Peter's political hero is Wayne Morris, the fabled Tiger of the Senate. Well, Peter has earned the nickname Tiger of the House. He has been tireless in his advocacy, he's been fierce in his defense of Oregon values, and he stands up to injustice wherever he sees it. One of the things that we did together uh, way back when was create the Progressive Caucus back in 1991. And the purpose of the caucus was to kind of focus on the needs of working families uh, in this country. What always impressed me most about Peter was he was very much on the ground. We worked on issues of war and peace together, job creation. We worked on issues of trade. Peter has delivered for Oregon. $1.3 billion of late for our infrastructure, for roads and bridges, for broadband. Things that are going to make a difference for Oregonians for generations to come and particularly help rural and small town Oregon. It's been his passion and he's delivered. Chair DeFazio has a great deal to be proud of when it comes to the way he's shaped American transportation. We're talking about a leader who has been in public service for 36 years and whose fingerprints are on so many of the achievements of modern American infrastructure and transportation. After the Boeing 737 MAX aircraft was involved in two accidents that killed 346 people overseas, and led to the worldwide grounding of the aircraft. 
Peter DeFazio launched an 18-month committee investigation. Peter's investigation found evidence that Boeing executives put profits over safety and pushed a flawed airplane through the regulatory process. Over the course of the investigation, Boeing's CEO resigned, and they paid more than $2.5 billion to settle criminal charges. Peter went on and crafted legislation that was signed into law to reform the airplane certification process to strengthen safety and accountability so this never happens again. Aviation safety is one of the most important functions of my department, and it is one of the most important imperatives in U.S. transportation. And Chair DeFazio has been a ferocious but also fair voice, making sure that there is proper oversight and the reforms that are needed to maintain American aviation leadership into the 21st century. There isn't enough time to be able to enumerate all the areas that Peter has been effective protecting special places, whether it's Steens Mountain, Oregon Caves, the Devil's Staircase, our wild and scenic rivers. Uh, these are areas that Peter has fought to protect because they are special to Peter. He's experienced them. This is how he regenerates his soul, and we're going to benefit from it for years to come. Chair Peter DeFazio is a relentless force for progress. Throughout his nearly 36 years in the House, he has been a deeply respected leader, a passionate fighter for Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, and a champion of sustainable, smart, green infrastructure. For Oregonians, his legacy is enduring. He will have left a lasting mark on natural resources policy, on infrastructure investments throughout the state, and in the hearts of minds of people. <laughs> Peter's incredible record and service go beyond legislative accomplishments. He refused every congressional pay raise, instead using those pay raises to fund scholarships at five Southwestern Oregon community colleges. Over the years, Peter contributed over $400,000 toward 286 scholarships for hardworking Oregonians wanting to further their education. Over his career, Peter DeFazio cast more than 20,000 votes, and he logged over 6 million miles commuting between Oregon and Washington, D.C. He regularly held over 20 town hall meetings every year across the district to hear from his constituents and he never left until every question was answered. Peter walked picket lines with union workers. He led marches when the community was calling for justice, and he brought the community together after the 2016 election when the world felt so uncertain. Peter DeFazio spent 36 years in Congress fighting for us. His impact in Oregon and across the country will be felt for generations to come. As Chair DeFazio prepares for his next chapter, Congress and the country are grateful to his beloved wife, Myrnie, for sharing him with us for so many years. We wish them both the best. Peter, I'm really proud of you. You have uh, worked like a dog and put your heart and soul into the, your job and made a huge difference for your constituents, for people across the country. You've just made a incredible impact and again i'm proud of you good job peter congratulations on a tremendous uh, run in congress you've had a lot of success over the years uh, congratulations on your portrait uh, that means you're going to be around this building and in this, this hall for many many years peter thanks very much for all the work you've done for the american people uh, over the years Chairman DeFazio, congratulations on your extraordinary leadership and career in public service, and I'm wishing you the very best as you go into private life. Peter, after having worked for so long together on so many issues, it's really hard to me to think about serving in Congress without you. But I know whatever your next chapter is going to be, you're gonna to continue to make a difference, you're gonna bring that passion and commitment, and we're going to be better with whatever you do next. I can hardly wait.